How's it going guys, I'm Theo Joe. Now, I'm sure that most of you already know about SSDs, solid state drives, but you might not know all the ins and outs of the different characteristics and types of SSDs, and there are actually a lot of different variations that are significant and you should know about for the next time that you go and buy one. Otherwise, you might not get the maximum speed that each one is capable of, you might waste money on something you don't need, or you might just get something that is completely overkill. So why don't we go over the different types of SSDs so you can better understand, and I'm talking everything from different protocols to connectors to literally shapes, and hopefully by the end of this, you should better understand it. Now the first characteristic we're gonna go over is the physical interface, basically the physical method of the connection between the SSD and the rest of the computer. So a couple examples, the two we're gonna be talking about are SATA and PCI Express. You may have heard of these. But I do wanna make a distinction. When I'm talking about the physical interface, I'm not referring necessarily to the connector, but rather the method that is used. So for example, with SATA, there are different types of connectors. There's the internal connectors and the eSATA external connectors that both use SATA, but they just look different. And the same idea is with PCI Express. You have different slots that are different sizes, but they still use PCI Express. So just keep that distinction in mind that the SATA or PCI Express interfaces might not use the same exact connector every time. So anyway, the first interface is SATA. I'm sure you guys know about this. It's super common, it's been used in drives for years, though it is designed for slower, older mechanical hard drives. It has a limit of up to six gigabits per second in SATA 3, the latest version. So it is kind of slow and it also has lower latency because again, it was not designed in the first place with SSDs. So it, it does work with SSDs and if you don't need anything more than six gigabits, then it'll work. But for those maximum speeds, you're gonna need something different. So that brings us to PCIe or PCI Express, which is a so-called expansion bus which is basically just a system for connecting different components in the computer. So universal serial bus, USB is for connecting things. That's all it is. But the thing with PCI Express is it is much, much faster and you use this for things like graphics cards, I'm sure, which has the big slot on the motherboard, you're probably familiar with it, but you can actually use the PCIe interface for other things besides graphics cards, you can use it for storage. Now, the speed of a PCIe connection will depend on how many so-called lanes it's using. One lane of PCI Express is referred to as X1, and that is just basically one set of connectors. However, if it's a bigger slot, it may combine multiple of those and get faster speeds. So for example, there's X4, X8, and the maximum size is X16, which is about the size you would see if you were to plug in a graphics card, it uses that whole thing. There are different updates and versions to PCIe. The latest one is 3.0, and X1, so one lane of PCI Express right now, can do eight gigabits per second. So we talked about SATA, which can only do six gigabits per second, and here only one lane of PCI Express can do already more than that, but there's even more lanes you could use. So you could do X4, which is 32, and you could do X8, which is 64, or you could do 128 gigabits per second at X16. So that is a huge amount of data. You can use however much you want of that, depending on how much the device needs. And it's also good to know that pretty much every update to PCIe doubles the bandwidth. So PCI Express 4 will double all of those values. So it is important to know those two different interfaces, SATA and PCI Express, when we're gonna be talking about everything in the rest of this video, and when you're going out to buy a hard drive, because you might see that it has a certain speed, but if you're not connecting it the right way, now you'll understand why you might not get the maximum speed unless you do it right. So next up, we're gonna talk about the different form factors and connectors of SSDs, literally the different shapes and sizes. So the most common one you saw would probably be a 2.5 inch drive, and that is ever since they had hard drives, they have 2.5 inch hard drives and SSDs as well. But most of these are going to be SATA drives. So typically if you see one, it's just gonna be a maximum of that six gigabits per second for SATA 3, and that will give you a theoretical maximum of about 750 megabytes per second. 
However, in real life with overhead, you might only see around 600 megabytes per second as a maximum if you're using a regular 2.5 inch SATA SSD, which most of those are. So again, if we want those maximum speeds, we're gonna have to start using PCI Express. So the next option is a PCI Express expansion card form factor for an SSD, which is literally just an SSD you plug directly into one of those PCI Express ports that is like the slot that you put into a graphics card. And that's gonna give you as much speed as you need. So typically it'll probably be either X4 or X8, and there you will not be limited by the connection at all. And like I mentioned, most of these are just gonna be X4, that's 32 gigabits per second, more than you would need in most SSDs. Although there are some like this super expensive Intel SSD that plugs directly into an X8 slot or uses X8 lanes, you can plug it into a bigger slot if even if it doesn't use all the pins, but that's like several thousand dollars. So you can spend the money if you want, but X4 is probably enough. Now this next form factor is pretty interesting, it's relatively new, and that is M.2. You may have heard of this, and it also refers to the M.2 connector. It's kind of both the form factor and the connector. And this does actually use PCIe Express. It uses four lanes, although it does also support SATA and USB 3, interestingly. So you don't necessarily have to plug in an SSD into an M.2 slot, although it does suit that very well. And the nice thing about M.2 drives is they're very small. I mean, the connector itself is very small, so usually the whole drive is along with it. Although you need to keep in mind that usually this connector is attached directly to the motherboard. So if you don't have an M.2 connector on your motherboard, you're not gonna be able to use one of these unless you were to get some sort of expansion card that goes into a PCI Express port and then you connect the M.2 that way. But at that point, you may as well probably just get a direct PCI Express SSD and forget about the adapter. M.2 drives are getting a lot more popular. This is usually reserved for the really high end SSDs. So for example, you can typically get multiple gigabyte speeds of read and write out of this. So one specific example is Samsung's 960 Pro. That'll give you a read speed of 3,500 megabytes a second and a write speed of 2,100 megabytes a second. And you can use that full speed because it does use that X4 PCI Express interface using the M.2 connector. Remember, we made that distinction earlier on. And finally, for the different connectors and form factors, this one you may not have ever heard of, and that is called a U.2 connector. And this is basically like a enterprise grade M.2 and it is also using a PCIe Express X4 four lanes, although it is also compatible with SAS and SATA. So if you need to use one of those, you can, but the real point is to use it with PCIe Express. So you will see some U.2 enterprise grade SSDs. They're usually 2.5 inch. For example, there are some made by Intel. And you might be wondering, well, why would you use this over M.2? What's the advantage? Well, if you think about it, an M.2 connector is attached directly to the motherboard, so you have to only have space for as many connectors and, and drives as you can shove on that motherboard. There's not a lot of space. Whereas U.2 actually uses a wire connector. So you could probably see where I'm going with this. You can fit a lot more drives on the same motherboard because instead of having to fit the entire M.2 or SSD on the motherboard, you can just put a bunch of different connectors and then spread out the hard drives externally. So you can fit a lot more. And also the form factor of a 2.5 inch drive is better suited for a data center. It's easier to hot swap. Whereas with M.2, you typically have to like either snap it off or unscrew it. It's not very realistic if you're dealing with a ton of drives. Typically, you are not going to see any U.2 connectors on a consumer motherboard, maybe if it's like a really top end one. Although, if you really want to use one, you can actually get M.2 to U.2 adapters that plug into the slot, and then you can use an SSD that uses that if you want. All right, so those are the different connectors and form factors. Now we're gonna get into the different protocols or logical interfaces. So you can think of this like the software, whereas PCI Express and SATA can be thought of as like the hardware. It's the software behind the physical connections. Now the first of these is the most common older one. Almost all drives are gonna use it, and that is AHCI, which is the Advanced Host Controller Interface. 
And this is very widely accepted software-wise, although the next one we're gonna talk about is gaining a lot of adoption, so there's not really any issues. But AHCI is pretty old, it's been around for years, it's been used extensively, and it was designed, though, for slower mechanical hard drives. It's not really optimized for SSDs. Specifically, it has a lot higher latency than what SSDs are capable of, so it's not really ideal. So you could still use an SSD with AHCI, but if you did, you wouldn't be taking advantage of it fully. But really that would only be the case if you were using the SSD with PCIe Express, because if you're using it with SATA, it's already limited and it doesn't really matter if you're using AHCI anyway. Now the new kid on the block though, way better than HCI, you may have heard of it, is called NVMe, Non-Volatile Memory Express. And this was designed from the ground up to be optimized and best used with SSDs, specifically with PCIe Express. And you can use it either with PCIe Express slots, like the regular ones, or the M.2 slot using PCIe Express. Although you wanna keep in mind that if you are putting it into one of those slots, you still need to make sure that it's in NVMe mode or else you'll just get that slower AHCI performance. If you're wondering specifically how it improves over HCI, well, NVMe has a lot lower latency, which means it can process commands a lot sooner because SSDs can deliver it faster, whereas before it wasn't really necessary. Hard drives were slow, it took a while to get the information, so it wasn't really optimized so much in that area, but really there is a lot of optimization with lower latency here. Also, it uses multi-core support better. And also, more importantly, NVMe takes an advantage of what is known as parallelism property of flash memory. And this is kind of important, so let me explain it. So with regular old hard drives, you might know the construction of them. Typically, it's a bunch of different platters, and then there is a read and write head on each one. And then the actuator will move the drive heads back and forth so it can read data on the drive as it's spinning. Now, each drive head is not independent. It has to be all connected to one actuator. And because of the physical nature of the drive, that means it can really only read one piece of information from one platter at a time because it can only control one actuator. So it's not really good at getting a bunch of different information simultaneously, which means that AHCI didn't ever account for something like flash which can access multiple parts of information at once. Because with flash memory, instead of having to access one platter at a time, you have multiple, multiple flash memory chips on one solid state drive, and all of those can deliver data to the controller at the same time. So it can access a lot more information. So you can probably see how NVMe, with being able to take advantage of this parallel access of information, it's gonna be able to process a lot more information simultaneously at lower latency, and it's just gonna do a better job. And that's kind of where the multi-core support comes into play as well. It's just gonna use the properties of flash memory to its fullest, where HCI was never designed for any of that. So I guess we can quickly sum up what we just talked about by saying that if you want the maximum performance out of an SSD, you wanna get one that either is a PCI Express expansion card or one that plugs into M.2, and you want to enable NVMe mode instead of HCI, assuming your motherboard does support it. Now, finally, not only are there different shapes and sizes and connectors of SSDs, but now there are actually multiple just overall technologies used and totally different architectures, not just flash memory anymore. The first we can talk about is flash memory, obviously, quickly. You already know, I'm sure, a lot about it. It's non-volatile, which means that unlike RAM, if you turn off the computer, it can store the data. It's electronic, solid state, there's no moving parts, unlike a hard drive. And even though it is very, very fast, it's not quite as fast as RAM. Actually, it's much, much slower than RAM, just much, much faster than a hard drive. Now, besides Flash, though, the other new one is Intel's new 3D Crosspoint or X-Point technology, which is different than Flash, and they're using this in their Optane-branded SSDs. 
and this is actually faster even than flash memory. It's a totally different structure than traditional flash, so I'm not really gonna get into the whole details of how exactly it works. That would be an entire new video, but just know that this is out there. And this is actually a lot closer to RAM speeds. Apparently, it's about 10 times slower than RAM, but a thousand times faster in terms of latency than regular flash memory. So it can do a lot faster operations, a lot more operations per minute, even though necessarily the read and write speed isn't enormously faster, there are a lot of situations where lower latency is very important. And another really good advantage is the endurance, the write endurance. Now, if you didn't know, flash memory and regular SSDs can only be written to a certain amount of times before those flash memory cells start to degrade and don't really work as well. And that usually is gonna be more than a regular person would use their computer for, but if you're using it for something like a scratch disk where for video editing, it's reading and writing a ton of data constantly, then that could be an issue. So obviously with something like Optane, where it can read and write a thousand times more over the course of its life, you're not gonna have to worry about that. Optane drives are actually available right now, either as M.2 or PCIe Express, Although I will say that for 99.9% .9 of people, it's definitely overkill. Like I mentioned, for maybe a scratch disk or something, it could be useful in very specific situations. Although it is clearly better than flash memory. So we could see maybe over the course of the next several years it actually taking over and being the choice of storage if they can increase the amount of storage limit in those drives and bring down the price as well. However, I'm not sure if it will totally take over ever because it is a proprietary technology. So unless other manufacturers come up with their own similar thing, then it's probably gonna be a lot cheaper still always to buy flash memory. So we'll have to see. But with that, I think we have covered pretty much all the different variations and types of SSDs you might come across, and hopefully now you should have a much better understanding of which one you might wanna go for the next time you build a computer or even just upgrade your drive. And who knows, maybe if you're already using like an M.2 drive, you may realize, oh my gosh, I didn't have it in NVMe mode and you haven't been getting those maximum speeds that you could have, so you'll have to look up how to change that. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also be sure to enable notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button or else YouTube probably won't even show you new videos even if you do subscribe because the algorithm is really junk. Anyway, again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.